New York, our grand bustling city, full of modern wonders and attractions. But today, our glorious city gets a new attraction, one full of strange ideas and imagination. At this historic building right here in Manhattan, artists from all across the world have come here as part of the new movement of art. A movement they describe as bringing the modern world and art closer together. A movement simply known as New Realism. Today, we have some special guests to give us some helpful insight into the world of New Realism. Let's hear what they have to say. All right, well, thank you, Sean, for the kind introduction. Now, before we get started with introducing all these great artists, we need a little background information on the new Novia Realisme, or in other terms, the New Realists. So first, the founder of the European movement of contemporary art was Javes Klein. The principal concern of the New Realism was to respond to the changed role of art within the new consumer society, because fine art was dying. They challenged traditional art forms, believing that the world is a source that artists can take parts and incorporate them into art and bring life and art closer together. This is rather said as poetic recy recycling of urban, industrial, and advertising reality. Wayne Theobald is an American artist. He was born on November 15, 1920 in Mesa, Arizona. He started his career in high school working for the animation department of Walt Disney Studios and then later enrolled in the Frank Wiggins Trade School in Los Angeles. Influenced by other commercial artists, he began his own career in which he pursued a Master's of Fine Arts and later specialized in painting. Bakery Counter was one of the pieces exhibited by Wayne Theombod. It was created with oil paints on a 5 by 6 foot canvas. This large painting portrayed an old-fashioned white bakery case, and it had light hues of washed-out color on top of the case that manipulated the green ground. He often played with different lighting in his paintings. In this painting, you see yet again his passion for painting sweet treats, such as the beautiful white cakes and assortment of other desserts, like pies and donuts. This artwork sold late in the 1990s for over $1 million. Another piece that was exhibited during the show by Wayne Theombod was salads, sandwiches, and desserts. This artwork showed his famous use of repetition in rolls of food as it portrays rolls of sliced avocados, cantaloupe, pies, sundaes, and sandwiches. Although his work was not subjective towards social contact or criticism, he believed that his work did celebrate the standardization of food and the rituals around food. With that, this artwork embraced the American culture with the desire for an overabundance of things. In this work, he uses the same technique of thick oil paint strokes to manipulate food textures on canvas. Andy Warhol was born on August 6, 1928 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He was a very successful magazine and ad illustrator who was also one of the leading artists in the pop movements. He also took up photography and went into other medias. He took free classes at the Carnegie Institute and also studied pictorial design at the Carnegie Institute of Technology. One of Andy Warhol's big works of art was the Campbell Soup Cans. It composed of 32 cans on 32 canvases. It was done in 1962 and each one was 20 inches by 16 inches. One of each of the canned soup varieties at the time that the company offered. It was produced by a printmaking method and themes from popular culture help the pop art. The motivation was that it, cho it chose because he needed a new subject after he abandoned the comic strips. 
This work by Andy Warhol was called Do It Yourself, The Flowers Edition. It was an outstanding offset lithograph at the size of 30 inches by 25.5 inches. It was also an unfinished work from 1962, and it was done with crayon on paper. This work by Andy Warhol was called Marilyn Diptych. It was done in 1962 on a silk screen painting. It was one of Warhol's most famous works, and it has been praised by many critics. It is 50 images of Marilyn Monroe. It was also from a publicity photograph from the film Niagara, which was done in 1953. Christo was born in Bulgaria in 1935. He was an environmental sculptor known for his controversial outdoor sculptures. His major influence was nature and preservation. Package by Christo. This piece was part of his wrapped object series. It explores the transformative effect fabric and tactile surfaces have when wrapped in familiar objects. Christo and his wife, Jean Claude, brought this act of wrapping to a much larger proportion when they applied it to the environment. Roy Lichtenstein was an American pop artist born in New York in 1923. He first became interested in art during his early school years and went to Ohio State University to receive his master's degree in art. When he began teaching in 1960 at Ruggsters University in New Jersey, the environment around him influenced his movement into pop art. He was inspired by the style of comic books and Sunday comics, often taking actual panels and repainting them in bigger forms. This first piece is famously known as Lichtenstein's Refrigerator. Painted in 1961, it depicts an average 50s, 60s, stay-at-home wife or mother cleaning her refrigerator. As you can see, it incorporates dotted print shading seen in most c colored comics, truly capturing the style this next piece, known as Blam, was based upon a comic known as All American Men at War. This last piece is another war image known as Live Ammo. It depicts a bazooka destroying a tank. It greatly depicts the unexpected and uses great visuals of bright vibrant colors against the dark background. This last piece is another war image known as Live Ammo. It depicts a bazooka destroying a tank. It greatly depicts the unexpected and uses great visuals of bright vibrant colors against the dark background. Robert Indiana was born in Newcastle, Indiana in 1928. He went to school at the University of Edinburgh and Harrod School of Art and Design. His main influence was Ellsworth Kelly. He was an early friend and mentor in New York and had hard edge style and pure, unaccident color in his work. He is responsible for him being an artist. The other influence that Robert Indiana had was Life Magazine. He saw art in Life Magazine, whereas he did not in museums. The American Dream won by Robert Indiana, oil on canvas. There is limited information on this piece. However, there is a lot of meaning behind every subject in this piece. His model for the American Dream won was Mae West, who Robert Indiana saw on night after night on television. He's seen her as an obvious American idol. The number 40, 29, 37, and 66 are the heavily traveled U.S. routes that he has lived on in his U.S. Air Force days. The continual five stars represent five bases of the American game that Robert Indiana started, stated as awful. The American Dream 2, also known as the Black Dream 2 by Robert Indiana. 
This is a screen print, and once again, there is limited information on this piece. This piece is comprised of four separate sheets, and this work was meant to be cynical, as he was being very critical of the American, American experience. Gene Tangley is a Swiss artist. He was born on May 22, 1925 in Freiburg, Switzerland. He started an apprenticeship as a decorator while attending courses at the School of Arts and Crafts in Basel. He was a shop window decorator in a department store and later moved on to painting and sculpting. He was influenced by Marcel Duchamp and kinetic art and later joined the Dada movement. Later in the 1960s, he became one of the founders of the movement New Realism. One piece of art exhibited by Jean Tingley was his WNYR number 15 that was created in 1962. This piece is made out of plexiglass, metal attachments, radio parts, electric motor, and a red light bulb. This piece is a small motor that was mounted on a radio that turns a knob to constantly change channel frequency, and the red bulb also lights up on this piece. A second piece created by Jean Tingley was his radio sculptor. In this artwork, he used a radio, an electric motor, and metal pieces. This piece of artwork made indescribable noises that was produced by the collection of moving parts, including the radio itself. While the piece moved, it made fragmented noises of music and sentences through its loudspeaker. Armin was a French-American painter who was associated with the Nouveau Realist Day, or New Realist Movement. It emerged in 1960 and also represented the pop art. He was an abstract painter and made sculpture. He was inspired by the concept of the ready-made. He developed an aesthetic based on the act of destruction. He, was, he admired his mother's strengths strength and character, and he was also shaped by his father's cultural in, interests. This work by Armin was another part of his accumulation series. It was the accumulation of teapots. It was done in 1964, and it was composed of metal and plastic sculpture. It was many teapots put together in a given space. This next piece by Armin was Chopin's Waterloo. It was done in 1962, and the concept behind this one was that he smashed a pano with an axe in the presence of a violinist. He then fastened the debris to a large panel and then he exhibited at a show which was titled Musical Rage. This work by Armin was called the Madison Avenue. It was part of his accumulation series which he liked to do. It was large quantities of a single mass-produced object which were collected in a given space. There was no symbolism and it was unexpected content. It was basically an accumulation of high heel shoes. Female edition. Claes Oldenburg was born in Stockholm, Sweden in 1929. He was an American sculptor known for his public art installations. He thought of himself as a realist. He thought art must relate to the realities of everyday life. He made large-scale mundane objects based off of those. Lingerie Counter by Claes Oldenburg. This piece is made out of textiles, canvas, plaster, enamel, metal stand, neon tube, mirror, and fiberboard. It is a sexually humorous composition. Floor Burger by Claes Oldenburg. This piece was originally titled Giant Hamburger. It is an oversized soft sculpture. The canvas is filled with foam, rubber, and cardboard boxes. It is then painted with acrylic paint. This piece challenged the convention that sculptures should be rigid. Pie Alamo Mode by Claes Oldenburg. It is plaster on chicken wire and muslin that was then covered with paint. 
He was content with getting the paint blotches, spatters, and drips, which was an inspiration from abstract expressionism. James Rosenquist was born in Grand Forks, North Dakota in 1933. His education was at the Art Students League in New York City and the Heron School of Art and Design. His main influence was the abstract expressionism at the art school in New York City. Um, the main creators of that was Jackson Pollock and Willem D. Kooning. And of course he was influenced by the German modern master George Gross. He was influenced by George Gross because of his um, mordant satire in the German society. And he stood away from non-representational abstraction that happened at the New York school. And then being, an in, being a billboard painter influenced him. It wasn't the painting, but the thinking and the ideas and having an, having an idea that you've never seen before. Marilyn Monroe, edition one by James Rosenquist. It's oil and spray enamel on canvas. This was created because of the suicide of screen icon and sex symbol Marilyn Monroe. James Rosenquist created a stylized, fragmented, and inverted portrait of her with interwoven and disjointed parts of Marilyn's name, image, and trademark of Coca-Cola. James Rosenquist combined Monroe's fragmented image both with another popular product to show that the late life of Monroe was consumed by her superstar status. The Chrysler's Silver Skies by James Rosenquist. This piece represents a pivotal moment in the development of the artist's signature style. James Rosenquist creates a disconcerting dreamlike world by combining and overlapping images from varied commercial sources. He also does this by abrupt changes of scale and unexpected oh, fuck, I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> and now it's still recording. Stop it. Yves Clean was a French artist born in Nice, France in 1928. He was a leading member of the French artistic movement of New Realism. He was a pioneer in the development of performance art and a forerunner of minimal art as well as pop art. He experimented with monochrome pieces of one color, mainly blue, and toyed with the ideas of photo montages and landscapes. This first piece by Klein is simply known as the Blue Sponge. It stands at a good 40 inches tall, and the sponge material is actually made of real sponge, simply painted blue. Klein wanted to capture the feeling of dreamy fantasy and the ocean floor, the sponge surrounded by blue like the sponge surrounded by deep water. This final piece by Klein is known as Planetary Relief. It was meant to capture the essence of the surface of a planet. Klein says in order to give a natural feel to it, he tied a piece on to the roof of his car and drove around to capture the wind and the rain that came down onto the painting. Artist Oyvind Falström was a Swedish multimedia artist. He was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and attended Stockholm University. An art piece that was exhibited by Oyvind was Sitting, Six Months Later, Version A. A similar painting known as Sitting was created later in the year of 1962. In this piece of artwork, he uses variable painting with tempura and India ink on a paper mounted on canvas with vinyl magnets, string, and plastic beads. Well said, everyone. Though the art is strange and at times confusing, it definitely conveys a modern feel to it, one that may surely shape the future of art. And if you don't believe me, well, then go see it for yourself. Be there to experience the wonders of new realism.